hiker, alone on a high Sierra peak, gets crushed by a boulder. Infection is spreading fast through his shattered leg. Anytime I moved the leg, there was gonna be pus or blood coming out. With no food, he must make a risky decision. I was concerned that the leg was in such bad shape that I was gonna need to move. And the only way he could was to crawl. I was at that point where I'm gonna have to rescue myself. It's a mission he cannot fail. In the wild, when things go bad, they go bad fast. Without warning, your life can hang by a thread. Adventurer and survivor Craig DiMartino fought back from his own wilderness disaster to reclaim his life. Now Craig meets other courageous outdoorsmen who beat the odds and return from their own fight to survive. Hi, I'm Craig DiMartino. Here's a question. If you were badly injured, would you have the knowledge and the guts to work through the pain and do whatever it takes to save your own life? Greg Hine answered that question for himself the hard way. Climbing to the summit of Mount Goddard in the Sierras was the easy part. But when a boulder came crashing down and crushed his leg, surviving for the next six days would challenge his emotional and physical resources to the very limits of what one man can endure. Since finishing up his last semester at college, Greg Hine had been looking forward to a 4th of July weekend hike in Kings Canyon National Park in the Sierras of California. I always loved being in the outdoors. Um, hiking was always the thing that I loved more than anything else. I've spent the better part of my adult life in the outdoor industry, raft guiding, cave guiding, and just hiking and climbing. He planned a four-day hike that included reaching the summit of Mount Goddard. I studied the route, but I, having never been out there, it was sight unseen and just super easy walk up to Goddard for the most part. Greg reached the summit on Saturday. Then it was just a decision on where to come down. And that's the sticking point for me on the plan was which way I wanted to go. Greg had misplaced his map on the way up so he was winging it as to which direction to descend. Then, as he cautiously made his way down, a huge rock pulled loose from above and crushed Greg's leg as it careened past. I never saw the rock again, but I was on my butt sliding down the mountain. I had my backpack on, so it was kind of keeping me upright. When he was able to stop sliding, Greg knew he was in bad shape. In medical terms, his leg had a compound fracture. Both his tibia and fibula bones were broken. The condition of my leg was enough to scare me, and it hurt like hell. Greg had taken wilderness first aid, so he knew how to splint his leg. He also had to slow down the bleeding. The loss of blood could lead to loss of consciousness and hypothermia. And then he would be in real trouble but he didn't count on what happened overnight. He said you started to smell it. You started to get this odor, which would indicate gangrene or infection or something bad. I don't want to deal with this, but if I don't deal with this, it's gonna be a lot worse for me. Right. It goes gangrene, it's really difficult to fight that. I realized that any time I moved the leg, there was gonna be trauma to the wound. There was gonna be some pus or blood mixture coming out, and I luckily had a snow patch next to me, about 15, 20 feet away. Greg realized all he had to clean his wound with was snow. He hoped the cold would help cauterize it a little, and as it melted, wash out some of the bloody pus. But the snow patch was probably 15 to 20 feet away. His leg was throbbing, and he couldn't walk. The only way to get there would be to crawl, if he could manage it. A five-minute crawl felt like an eternity. Greg brushed off the top of the snow to get to a clean layer. He used ice crystals to scour the wound. 
He told Craig this was an important moment in his survival effort. It's getting infected, so now I've got to start cleaning it, and right. it just adds something to, to the experience. But in doing that, it kept me active in my own survival, and that was really helpful in that regard, to, to be forced to think more about it and to do something to try to keep myself as healthy as possible. You're being proactive. Yeah, and, and it helps staying alive in that right. regard. This patch of snow also became Greg's source of hydration. I did not have any food or water. I utilized um, the snow patch to put snow in the hood of my poncho. I would use the sun to melt the snow for water. During the day, he'd crawl away from the cold, wet snow to stay warm in the sun. Then he'd crawl back to clean his infected leg. But besides tending his wound, he tried to move as little as possible to conserve his energy. He stared out at the view and knew he was far away from any rescue. Periodically, he blew his whistle, trying to attract attention. Three short blasts, the universal distress signal, a desperate call for help. Greg Hines' leg has been shattered by a falling boulder. Now he's stranded in the High Sierras with an excruciating compound fracture and infection spreading rapidly through his body. With a compound fracture, the pain is at times very pronounced, but eventually my brain did shut off most of the pain that I was experiencing, so it was, it was just something that I had to, I had to endure. His brain also did him another favor. You know, I wasn't hungry at all. I can barely go six hours without eating and having hunger pains and never had one hunger pain. He did his best to conserve his energy and waited out his rescue. He assumed his dad would report him missing sooner than later. Hey, Greg. When Monday rolled around, it wasn't so much. Great concern as it was upset. Um, he wasn't home when he said he was going to be home. Right. And that made me a little angry. So I gave him Monday night and Tuesday as a grace period. I didn't think that it, anything was wrong. It was just that he was taking extra time. The accident happened Saturday. It was now Tuesday, but Greg still felt like he was doing the right thing. The reason why I stayed put was that I know that if you get lost or injured in the mountains, you don't start walking off and making it harder for people to try to find you. So I was thinking, well, it'd be easy. I just hold up here, you know, until someone finds me. Then, a potentially deadly turn for the worse. I woke up in the middle and I kind of in agony. I couldn't flex my ankle. And so I was concerned that the leg was atrophying or the muscles or the tendons were in such bad shape that I was gonna need to move. Not being a patient person and then the leg freezing on me, I was now at that point where I'm gonna have to rescue myself. Greg decided to try to crawl down to Davis Lake in the morning, where he believed he would have a better chance of being spotted. Without his missing map, he wasn't exactly sure which direction to head, since he would have to crawl every inch. He was going to need some guts and luck to get there. After his accident, Greg Hine decided to try to crawl to a location where he believed he would be easier to find. With his broken leg pulled up in his makeshift system of ties, Greg used his free arms and good leg to very slowly make his way down the slope. 
I was a little too jerky scooting down the boulder field that I was coming down or got going too fast and stopped. The shift of my hips and the bones let me know, and so that was painful. As he came into a grassy area, he smelled the familiar scents. Along the way, I happened to find some moths and some crickets. I had always heard about people eating them and was thinking, well, I might as well just try them out while I'm here. So I just took off the back legs and the wings, knowing that those are the things you need to, uh, to do so it doesn't get stuck in your throat. And I just ate it. So what's a cricket taste like? Nutty, I would say. Not raw almondy taste, but similar along those lines. Bugs are a good source of protein, but they weren't going to make up for Greg's lack of food for days. It took Greg several hours to crawl 1.6 miles to the source of Lake Davis. Exhausted from his crawl, he lay down to nap. His dad, mistakenly thinking he had to wait two days before reporting a missing person, when there is no waiting period, only called the sheriff that Wednesday afternoon. Yes, I need to report a missing person. Got a phone call maybe an hour or so later from a, a sheriff sergeant. Oh, he was pretty jovial. I mean, he was excited about going hiking. Asking just a litany of questions. Well, no, I mean, he's... Most of the questions, at least initially, were very subtly framed around Greg's state of mind when he left. I mean, he's always pretty happy. How did he say goodbye? He said, we'll see you later. Did it yeah. sound like a final goodbye? I quickly caught on that what they were wanting to find out at that point was, did he go up there to end his life? Okay, thanks so much for your help. I appreciate it. My supervisor uh, notified me that I needed to call Fresno County Sheriff Department because they were taking an initial report of a person who was overdue, and their itinerary took them into Kings Canyon National Park. Looks like I found the vehicle. No backpack in the back seat. After speaking with Fresno County deputies, heading back in, I learned that the vehicle was still at the trailhead of Florence Lake. Hello, this is Doug. Melanie Lloyd from the Park Service called Wednesday afternoon, probably about four o'clock. Uh, yes, he was carrying a Leatherman. Asking what kind of gear Greg had, had taken with him. Trekking poles. Shoe pattern, whether he was armed with a knife or gun. He had enough food uh, for the weekend. because How much food he had taken with him, how much water he had taken with him. Okay, I sure appreciate your help. Again, very, very thorough. As Wednesday night rolled around, I didn't want to get um, melancholy and think, well, I might possibly lose my son. I, I had utmost uh, confidence in him, but every once in a while some thoughts would sneak in that uh, maybe he was hurt. While Greg's dad was having his own distressing thoughts, Greg was having his most unsettling night since the accident. You knew your sister's birthday was happening. What was going through your mind at that time? She's had some pretty traumatic experiences on her birthday, and the last thing I wanted was her brother, you know, that she's grown up with, to have died, you know, on or near her birthday. Right. <laughs> and that was the only part I did cry. It was the lowest point that I had, and I was like, oh no, not Sis's birthday. I want to survive because I want to not die on my sister's birthday, but also, you know, I want to see loved ones and friends. And it sounds funny, but life's more beautiful. Yeah. I mean, you, oh, you appreciate yeah, yeah. you appreciate everything more. And, and to love and, and to be loved is, it means more to you. Right. Newly motivated, Greg made a bed for himself of dried grasses. Keeping busy kept the sad thoughts out of his head as he faced another day. Thursday morning, nine rescue teams were inserted into the field by helicopter. 
what our intention was to search certain trails that we would we, we suspected would be the most likely route Greg! that Greg Hine would have taken and also to set up trail blocks at uh, certain trail junctions. After we found Greg's signature in the summit book, that enabled us to Greg! focus on those areas north of Mount Goddard. And one of those areas uh, happened to be the basin around Davis Lake. So on Thursday, I ended up waking up and being pretty exhausted from the crawl down my forearms felt pretty shot and I was trying to plan out the day. I was like, well, maybe I should just hold on here, recover my strength, and then Friday move. And so I was just kind of being lazy that morning. Then mid-morning, I started hearing the chopper. As soon as I heard the park's chopper, it was just, how do I get noticed or recognized? Ah! At that point, I was like, oh, shoot, I should do something. So I tried to head to this rock so that I could wave this bivy sack around. I was in this limbo of trying to get a rock in my bivy sack to twirl it around to be noticed to throw it up in the air. Hey! It happened too fast and I couldn't get there soon enough. Oh. At that point, that was the first time I stood. That was pretty traumatic for the wound and painful for my leg. The search and rescue helicopter had come within 100 yards of Greg, but then peeled off not having seen him. Craig couldn't imagine being in that situation. The helicopters start buzzing Mount Goddard, and you see this happening, um, but they're not seeing you. And to me, that would be just frustrating and soul crushing all in one breath. The struggles and the stress of, well, they should see me. I'm, I'm visible. I'm doing all the things I can do to be found. And I still can't be found. And so as the day wore on, I finally was like, hell, I don't care anymore. I'm going to take a nap. And if a helicopter comes <laughs> by, I'm just going to sleep. You know, like, right. I'm just that tired. Greg didn't nap for long. He could hear helicopters throughout the day, and he would try to stand to draw their attention. I got within 200 feet of one helicopter. There was a second helicopter that came in the afternoon, and from what I found out, they were just dropping search crews off, populating the potential search areas where I might be. Right here. Finally, after six days, right stranded, starving, and suffering, hey. Greg was spotted. We're for search and rescue. I'm Ryan. Oh, it's so good to see you. Mr. Hine was located as the final search team was being inserted into Davis Lake. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to check your pulse real quick. I'm going to call it in. Okay. Am I alive? You're alive. Okay. <laughs> I was excited to talk to someone. It'd be the you know first person I'd talk to in six or seven days. They found him. Yeah. Okay. I got you guys. Relatively in good health, considering uh, the five days that he had spent. Two, three. In the wilderness with a broken leg. dropped two search and rescue teams in on the side of Goddard. So we drove up, we're talking to the sheriff's sergeant up there. Okay, but it's a big mountain. They're gonna be there to last One night. of the park service people okay, said we, we found, found him. <laughs> Wonderful words to hear. I started to get excited and I thought, well, wait a second, they did say what, what condition he was in. He Finish in. the sentence, is he still living? Just mail me check. So he was back on the radio, okay. Roger. came back and okay. said he's, he's alive. alive. He's breathing, he's coherent, he's talking. But he, he has a broken leg. Right. Oh. Music to our ears. We saw Greg about um, 1230. 
We told him how much we loved him. He said, I love you guys too. Greg's bones were reset after he left the hospital a little more than a week later. The survival of his leg was touch and go. He has had six surgeries and complications from infection. So after six surgeries, I will be able to walk again. And it took an incident like this for me to look at life in a different perspective. That my actions definitely weigh on other people <laughs> and to live more presently. Hey Just breathe, okay? Just breathe. I've gotten a little bit of patience for the first time in my life and that's why I believe this is such a positive experience for myself. Several things greatly assisted Greg in living through this ordeal. I believe first and foremost is he didn't panic. He recognized that he was going to be needing help. He stopped, reevaluated uh, his condition. He didn't become overwhelmed. He didn't hit panic mode and deteriorate. People hear your story and they're like, oh, I could never survive something like that. That guy is incredibly tough. I never looked at myself as being tough or you know, extraordinary in any measure. Almost everybody, unless you're living in a mental bubble, you've experienced something that has tried you. Ours was more physical. Most everybody else's is more mental. Right. Anybody can survive as, as long as you want to. Greg was lucky. He made some critical survival decisions that turned out to be the right ones. His leg was severely damaged and he's been on a long road to recovery. But he's determined, like I was, to return to doing the things he loves in the outdoors. That makes him a big winner in his fight to survive.